automation is useful for many, many reasons. It can make your parts cheaper. It can allow you to hire less skilled operators to run those parts. It can warn you when a part is out of tolerance. There's a tremendous amount of opportunity available to you when you decide to start implementing automation. And in my opinion, the first step in automation in any machine shop is just taking advantage of the tools that are in the machine that allow for this. So basically, the spindle probe and the tool setter. The guys over at Next Gen Cam, a Fusion 360 reseller, they reached out to me and they said, dude, we'd really like to sponsor a video where you kind of explain some of the basic or introduce in-process gauging. There are already videos by machine tool manufacturers out there on the internet that have that, but none of them have showed you how to do it with Fusion 360. And so that's what we're gonna do today. Let's get going. This is the part we're gonna be cutting inside our Haas VM2 here shortly. I'm gonna give you a brief rundown of, of the setup, the tool paths that we've selected, and then we'll post it out and check everything. In the old days, I used to just hand code all this stuff when I used SolidWorks, uh, even when I first got into Fusion, and now Fusion has just become more and more capable through the years. I really feel like there are a variety of ways to, to cut a part or to work on a part. You can do it kind of at the operation level, which is kind of like side one. You can do it at the feature level, and then you can do it at the surface level. And as you kind of narrow your focus with your toolpath selection, uh, you end up having more and more control. And I think many times you're able to create better surfaces or more accurate uh, surfaces as you narrow your focus. So here, I've arranged our toolpaths into two different folders, roughing the part and finishing the part with autocorrection. A couple of things I want you guys to notice. I just want to mention it before I start selecting toolpaths and we all get distracted. Number one, the critical feature here is this, these two surfaces and it's 1.000. One, one, all zeros. We're looking to hold this uh, as tight as the machine can hold it. Uh, that's the first thing. The second thing is, you'll notice that when you rough a part out like this, like this counterbore, you rough the side and the floor, and that's okay for roughing, but when you actually start finishing, you'd prefer to finish one surface at a time. That way you're controlling the tool load. Uh, there's less deflection involved. So you might wanna you know, do the floor first, finish the floor first, and then finish the wall. This isn't always incredible, this isn't always practical, and it's absolutely not always necessary, but it's just something to keep in mind. If you see our roughing toolpaths, you'll see that they go down well below the part, and our finishing toolpaths don't go as deep, and that's because we're trying to keep the end mill uh, in contact with only one surface at a time. We don't want to touch the wall and the floor. We want to touch either the wall or the floor. All right, here's our roughing toolpaths. You can see I always number and name the toolpaths. I do this for the products that we make here at our business and for the job shop work that I do. We're gonna rough off the face, rough the counter bore, rough the main bore, and then we're gonna rough out the perimeter. All of these operations leave 20 thousandths on the wall. Now we're gonna get into finishing, and tool pass one through three are nothing special. We're just gonna finish the perimeter. Notice we avoided our critical feature. We're gonna finish the counter bore. Now we're gonna finish the main bore. And that's that. Now is where it gets a little tricky. Toolpaths four through seven are really where the magic happens. And toolpaths four and six, as you guys are about to see, are the exact same toolpath. They're just 10 thousandths uh, different in with the cut. Our pre-finish is only going to take a 10 thousandths with the cut, because remember, there's only 20 thousandths left on the wall. So we're gonna pre-finish it, minus 20. So that means from a one inch feature, we should be at 0 0.980, so we're gonna Pre-finish it, we're gonna use the probe and inspect the geometry. You just go to probing, probe geometry. Now in here, you can. our probe is tool 99 in all of our machines. These are the surfaces that we chose and you can choose it with a channel, with an island or without an island, depending on what's going on with your, you know, with your machine. You may have to adjust your approach or your over travel, depending on how tight the uh, feature is or the the diameter of the probing ball versus the feature size. You can adjust the height just like any other toolpath. And last but not least, this is really where the, the magic tends to happen. And this is where you update, you, you select this box, update toolware, and you choose your toolpath. Now, if you're wondering, Jay, we're probing after toolpath number four. Why are we selecting it? Well, we're selecting it because 
this probing operation will honor the stock to leave and the tool number from toolpath number four. This way, nothing has to be hand edited. This is uh, new information to me. I've been doing this a long time, and so uh, it's not always convenient to just hunt down new methods if you don't need to, but we posted the first version of this video and somebody pointed it out and I did a little, did a little more research, and this is the way it goes. I generally correct 100%, that's totally up to you, and then print results. Now, notice that it says update toolware. One thing that is important to understand when you start to update toolware, you need to make sure that in your tool path, you have selected a compensation type, left or right, and either one of the main styles, in control, wear, or inverse wear. I tend to use wear. If you use in control in a Haas machine, it combines at the farthest left-hand side of the tool table, it combines the geometry diameter with the wear. If you use wear only, then you don't need to put anything in the geometry diameter. You only use the wear column. And so that's what I tend to use. And you'll see that because we choose wear, it gives us toolpath centerline geometry. Just for kicks, I'll show you guys what happens if you go to in, uh, in control. Instantly, it goes to part geometry, which is not what we're going to use. We're going to use wear. Last but not least, so we've pre-finished it. We probed it. It checked for size. It then updated the wear column for tool 15. It then finishes to the correct size, and then it probes it again one more time just to let us know if we're accurate. Now, we haven't covered this in this video, but things that can be done, you can actually go in and create logic. The variable for this measurement in a house control is 10,188. What you could do is you could go in there and create logic that says if it's on size, uh, maybe go ahead and engrave the, the, parts, the part number and the feature size right here. There's, there's all kinds of stuff. If it's out of tolerance, you could have it mill and X or scrap the part. That way, if you've got tons of these in the machine, the operator doesn't accidentally mix up a bunch of parts that are in tolerance with parts that are out of tolerance. So that's it. That's the basic gist of the way this works. Let's get over to the machine. Before we head over to the machines to make chips, I want to give a quick shout out to this video sponsor, NextGen Cam. NextGen Cam is a company that offers a variety of different services and training, both online and in person. They can even create custom post processors. You guys can use the discount code NERDLY for up to 50% off in the eStore. And just so you guys know, I don't get any commissions or any kickbacks, so this is just the discount code they gave me to pass along to you guys. Let's go make some chips.
Okay, so obviously we finished at one dead zero, but to be fair, you need to make sure that you check that with a set of gauge blocks or a micrometer, something that makes sure that the machine is cutting on exactly the size that it's telling you it is. And you guys saw that when we did our first probe at 9801, it was off by a 10th. So if we go into the offsets tab here, we should see in for fifth tool 15, that's what we were using. It corrected it one ten thousand. So all that would be left here to do, and it doesn't matter because I'm not gonna pick on any machines. This little VM2 is actually quite accurate, but all that's left here is to make sure that that is exactly what this says it is. And if it isn't, then you just gotta do a little bit of adjusting. That wasn't so hard, was it? We roughed this part out. To be fair, I kind of made some mistakes that you probably caught during the video. The feeds and speeds for this tool, we normally run on our Akuma M560. And that thing has a little bit more rigidity and a little bit more torque than our, than our little VM2. And so I ended up having to dial back the feeds and speeds a little bit. We were taking a pretty solid bite. I want to say the roughing was 12,000 RPMs at about two and a half thousandths or three thousandths per tooth. And we were taking a pretty big bite. I want to say 600,000 steep, 125,000 step over. So we were, we were removing some material. Uh, but at the end of the day, keeping the tool load even as we finished the slot on the right hand side of the part allowed the machine to leave a beautiful surface finish and a part that's perfectly on size. Okay, this is our finished part right here. This is the one inch slot. This is a 0.999 stack of gauge blocks. And you'll see that we can get this in here pretty easily. Not super easy, okay. So that goes in. There's a little bit of wiggle room in there. So I'm good with that. Here's a one inch gauge block. You can see that this, it just won't go. It just, it's just right, it's just right there. And then we have an inside mic. And so we'll try to bring this right to the edge. Try to get that lined up nice and neat. I don't know if you guys can see right there, but it's the zero is on the zero. So it this is on size. This thing is ready to rock and roll. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this video just as much as I enjoyed making it. We will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.